Claude Code is a fantastic agent and has recently taken the developer community by storm. And interestingly, not just for coding related things, but for other things in general, writing books, writing reports, things like that. And part of the reason is that it is so good at general purpose and longer time horizon planning and, and doing things deeply that it, it can be extended to, to all of these things. This isn't the first agent that has come out that has been able to do these deep work. So we have Manus, a, a general purpose agent, OpenAI's deep research, and now Claude Code. And, and, and these are all examples of agents that can act on long time horizons, on complex tasks, and go deep into different kind of like rabbit holes, but then bubble back up and, and accomplish kind of like a high level goal. I would argue that these all have a few things in common. And I came up with the term deep agents to describe agents that have these characteristics. There are four characteristics that make up deep agents. They have a planning tool. They use subagents. They have access to a file system and they have a detailed system prompt. Let's break it down. Under the hood, deep agents use the same tool calling loop that a simple React style agent would use. They run in a loop, they make an LLM call, and then based on that, they either stop or they go back and they take action on their environment and they get some feedback. If you try doing this naively with uh, LLM, they're really good at, at doing one or two or even three or four tool calls, but they struggle with longer time horizon tasks, planning on those tasks, and then executing and, and going deep into specific areas and subcomponents of that task. Deep agents, on the other hand, are able to do those longer time horizon, more complex tasks. And it's not that they're using a different algorithm. They're using the same algorithm. What's different is the four things I mentioned earlier, the prompt and the tools that it has access to. Let's go through these one by one. First up, let's talk about a planning tool. This is an excerpt from Manus's system prompt where it talks about the planner module that it has. And so you can see that it has a planner module that's used for overall task planning. Task planning will be provided as events in the event stream. And then basically it, it tells the agent in the system prompt to do everything in, in, in this plan. Claude Code also has this to do right tool which creates and manages structured tasks lists. So by prompting the agent to generate this, this plan, it can then have this plan in its context as it executes upon the various steps. Now, this tool that does the planning could actually be quite simple. So Claude Code, for example, with this to-do write tool, it doesn't actually do anything. It's a no-op tool, so it basically isn't a chance for the model to come up with a to-do list, and then it can quote unquote modify the to-do list, but it does that by just generating a new to-do list every time. So it doesn't actually track this in a data structure or anything like that. Why does this work then? It works because it creates these messages that are in the model's context that show this to-do list that it's tracking. And so it helps it kind of like keep on track, even if it's as simple as just putting this to-do list in the model's context. So the planning tool helps solve the issue that the agent isn't able to act cohesively over longer time horizon. Let's now talk about subagents. This is a diagram from Anthropic's advanced research paper, and you can see that they use a few different subagents here. They have a citation subagents and then a bunch of search subagents that they can kick off in parallel. Manus also uses subagents to accomplish its task. And so you can see that there are subagents that can focus on browsing or information gathering while this higher level orchestrator, the main manus brain, coordinates all of them. This article from Anthropic on the use of subagents in Claude Code summarizes a few of these key benefits. First is context preservation. So each subagent operates in its own context. So basically when it does its own tool calling loop, those don't pollute the main agent's context. So it can go off and it can do these rabbit holes and go really deep in these rabbit holes, but then those don't bubble back up to the main agent. And conversely, any work that the main agent might have done up to that point doesn't pollute the context of the subagent. So it just has a specific dedicated fo focus. You can give these subagents specialized expertise. This usually comes in the form of system prompts or tools that they have. And so this can allow them to really focus on a particular area or take a point of view that might 
be different from that of the main agent. And, and different opinions are good. They help arrive at kind of like a better result. These last two points really mostly relate to Claude code, but if you're designing a system that has a deep agent, they're probably applicable there as well. So A, these subagents can be reusable. So you can create one subagent to use with one agent and then, and then reuse it in another place. And likewise, these subagents can have different permissions. This kind of gets to the specialized expertise, but is a little bit finer grained of a point. So one subagent could have access to write files and the other one couldn't. And so you can actually scope down what, what these subagents can do. In terms of yielding better results, I think the main thing to realize about subagents is that they allow you to go deeper in specific areas by having this combination of context preservation and just really focusing on one thing and also this specialized expertise which guides that focus. Next, let's talk about file systems. So this is from a blog that Manis wrote on using the file system as a context. And so why does this work? So again, a key part of these agents is that as they do more things, more and more context is generated. And if you just keep on passing this in a loop to the LLM, that context will eventually degrade the LLM performance. So file systems are great because they let you offload some of this context to files, which the, the agent can then see and access and read if it wants to, but it doesn't necessarily pollute. And this is again from the Manus blog post, but if we just look at this, we can see the difference in what is in the context of the LLM. So rather than just putting large observations directly in the context, we can see that we have short observations which reference the file system with document X or file Y. And these can then be read back in deliberately or written to if they want. One really interesting point here is that Anthropic's models are fine-tuned to use a specific now this tool doesn't actually run server side. And if you look in their docs, they show how to call this tool as in to get the model to generate the payload for these tools. But then you actually have to implement and, and, and execute the tools yourself. And so these tools are for editing files. Um, so there's some built-in file editing tools into Claude that it's really good at using. And so combining this file system idea with Claude, you can actually get a system that where the model is fine-tuned to know how to write to and manage files, and that's really useful for managing the context. And then finally, I wanna talk about system prompts. So this sounds really basic. Of course, agents have system prompts. I think one underappreciated thing is that these system prompts are often really long and really detailed. So there's a bunch of leaked system prompts, but this is actually from the deep research system prompt that Anthropic open source. And this is just part of it. It's way longer than this. And so you can see that these system prompts start to get to be hundreds or thousands of lines. I think a common misconception is that because the models are so good, you can write a pretty short system prompt. And that's not at all the case. You need to give it a bunch of context on how to use these tools, like the to-do list tool and the planning tool and the uh, file system tools and the subagents, And you also need to give it information about the tasks that it's trying to do and how these should act. So again, obviously agents have system prompts, but I think the underappreciated thing here is that prompting absolutely still matters. And all the best deep agents are spending a ton of time and writing hundreds, if not thousands of lines into their system prompts. I wrote a blog on this that goes over a few of these concepts and links to more articles if you want to check it out here. I also made a Python package called Deep Agents, which comes with some off-the-shelf scaffolding for these types of Deep Agents. Specifically, it comes with built-in things for those four different attributes. So it comes with a built-in planning tool, a built-in file system tool, a built-in sub-agent tool, and a built-in system prompt. And then you just provide a few custom instructions and any additional tools that you wanted to have access to. And you can pretty easily create deep agents for research or coding in far fewer lines than you could if you were writing it from scratch. So if you're building or you want to build deep agents, I would highly encourage you to check this out. If you're interested in using this package, I'll do a deep dive video on the code behind this in a future video. Thanks for watching.